All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Blackhawk Technical College. I've been going over the actual uh, chapter material from Murox MySQL 2nd Edition, which is our textbook for the online version of 152-147 Relational Database Development for the Spring 2016 semester. I'm going to go through the first 12 chapters. I've gone through all 19 chapters um, for, of the PowerPoints, and now I'm going through the first 12 chapters of the actual text itself. I've gone through chapters 1 through 6, so now it's time for chapter 7, which is how to code a subquery. All right, and subqueries, almost always when you do a subquery, which is a query within a query, almost always there's another way to do it other than a subquery. In fact, a lot of times what subqueries do is they replace a join. All right, so let's take a look at an example of a subquery. All right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm back into my old friend here, PHP my admin. I've got the AP database here loaded. And let's say that I wanted to find the average invoice total from all invoices. So I could type in, you saw this the other day, select AVG invoice total from invoices. All right, not a problem, I can do that. And it comes up, gives me an answer. And again, I can even round it if I want to, but you get the idea. So if I want to round it again, I can. So let's do that so it looks nice. So select and then round this to two decimal places. Right. And now it comes off as 1879.74. All fine and dandy. Okay, but what if I wanted to uh, find the invoice numbers, the invoice dates, and the invoice total for all invoices that were greater than that? Well, I could then write this one. I could write this particular query that we just looked at. In fact, let's do it like this. Let's, let's bring up uh, Notepad++. And that was again from the other day, so close, close. And just change it to this. All right. So I could do this, and then I could turn around, which again gave me an answer of this. So it gave me an answer of, once I rounded it, of 1879.74. Then I could go in and say this, select invoice number, invoice date, invoice total from, from invoices where invoice total greater than this value. So I could do that. In other words, I could do this as a two-step process. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing it that way. So again, I could come back into here and write myself another query. And here are all the queries. And if you look through here, every one of those is greater than the average. And again, that average was 1879.74. And when we look here, probably shouldn't have done it by date. Let's let's make it so it's a little bit. Let's let's uh, do an order by, and we'll order it by the invoice total in descending order. Okay. Taking this off of what's in the book on page 189. Adding my own spin to it. But you see that when we look at every one of these, they're all, this whole column, every value in there is greater than 1879, 16, or whatever the heck it was. So again, one way we could do it would be like this. So again, this would be right here. 
query number one. Okay. This would be the output. And this would be query number two. And again, there's nothing wrong with doing that, except that if I wanted to, I could write this as, I could write this as one query, all right? So what I do is with this one that we've got right here, okay, instead of saying greater than this, I'm going to say greater than, and I'm going to put in the original query from down here. And normally, the system likes this to be in parens. I guess it already was in there. So let's try that one and see what this does, okay? So you've already seen, when you look on here, you've seen that we got 20 rows, 21 rows, I should say, and you see where they are, okay? Now, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to write my new and improved, so to speak, query. Press go, and lo and behold, 21 rows, and it looks exactly the same as what I did previously. So what I did was, rather than writing, rather than writing two different queries, and using the output of the first query in, as the input into the second query, I wrote one query within a query, where I still use the output from the first query as the input to the second query. But now, what I ended up doing was I used the output from this inner query as the input to this outer query. All right? So the system looked and it said, oh, there's parens here. I've got to do this first. It came up with an answer, and then it said select this where it's greater than that answer we just figured out, and then do the order by. All right, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it as there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this as two different queries. However, the advantage that you get from writing one query like this is speed. You're only writing one query. So a subquery is a select statement that's coded within another SQL statement. For this to work, you must enclose the subquery in parens. A subquery can return a single value, a list of values, or a table of values. A subquery can be coded anywhere a single value, list of values, or table is allowed. The syntax for a subquery is the same as for a standard select statement, but a subquery can't include an order by clause. So the order by clause was not in the subquery. So if I'd have come in here and tried to put an order by, I would have got an error message. And you can't nest a subquery within a subquery. All right. This, this chapter is literally just filled with really, really good examples, all right? Such as, on page 191, the author has this. Select the invoice number, the invoice date, and the invoice total from invoices join vendors, whoops, on invoices dot vendor ID equal vendors dot vendor ID where vendor state equals California. I'm going to move that into its own line. Sometimes when I hit enter, for whatever reason, this keyboard sticks. Order by invoice date. All right. Hopefully I didn't type in anything incorrectly.
And there it is. So these are all my invoices from California. Now, what's so big about that? Nothing, except that what I can do is I can rewrite this, okay? So where I've got this where, where um, vendor state equal California, I can change this to where I can say vendor ID in, which is a keyword, select vendor ID from vendors where the vendor state is equal to California. I'm doing the same thing that I just showed you. All right. I'm, I'm taking what had been done as a join and I'm redoing it so that now it is being done. Oh, and I made a mistake. All right. It says vendor ID is ambiguous. And I already know what the problem on that is. All right, select the invoice number, the invoice date, the invoice total from invoices. We don't need the join here, that's the problem. Where the vendor ID is in this, so let's look at that. And lo and behold, I get the same answer I got before. All right, so let's redo this one. Take a look at this. Some people like to do joins. I mean, it, it is what relational database systems are all about. Some people will do whatever they can to keep from doing joins. These two queries will give you the exact same information. This one says select the invoice number, invoice date, and invoice total from invoices. But join that with the vendors so that you're only giving me the invoice number, invoice date, and invoice total from invoices where the state is California. This is doing the same thing, but we're replacing the join and the where with this. So they mention on page 191, the author says here, the advantages of joins, the select clause can include columns from both the tables. A join tends to be more intuitive when you take a look at it. Advantages of subqueries. You can use a subquery to pass an aggregate value to a main query. A subquery tends to be more intuitive when it uses an ad hoc relationship between tables. And long complex queries can sometimes be easier to code using subqueries. The bottom line is this. It's the old saying, <clears throat> six of one, half dozen of the other. It's which one are you more comfortable with? When you use the in operator in a subquery like we did right here, the subquery must return a single column that provides a list of values. And that's what we're returning here. If we only wanted the first one, we could have done distinct I mean, there's a lot of different ways and things that we could have done here. So you introduce a subquery with the in operator to provide a list of values that you test against this test expression. When you use in, the operator must return a single column of values. All right. What if we did this? All right. So let's grab that one. And run it. We're going to get different results and a lot more of them. 74 results because these are all the ones in which the state is not 
California. So you know what? This one would have been much easier and better served if when I did all this stuff, I would have started it with invoice state. And let's order it by invoice state. All right, so let's try that one. Hopefully uh, I didn't make any syntactic errors when I keyed this in. It doesn't know the state. Uh, I thought there was a state on here. There is not. So I'd have to grab state from another. I guess that's why they didn't use it. Okay. The point is, when we did this, and I'll remove the invoice date, and we'll change this one back to invoice date. All right. When we first did it, we said equals. Now, so basically it said for every vendor that's in here that's from California, now it says for every vendor that's in here that's not from California. All right, so that's the in. There is an all keyword that you can use, and this is shown on page 197 in the book. All right, so this is kind of a long query, but that's fine. And all is a keyword, which is the reason I'm capitalizing it. And again, I haven't done a real great job of this, but I should be just capitalizing all the keywords so that you get more and more comfortable with using these keywords. So let's run this and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Again, hopefully my typing was okay. It looks like it was. All right, now, what's kind of important to do here, again, when you want to learn this stuff, break it up into two queries. So grab that query, select invoice total from invoices where the vendor ID is equal to 34. So I'm grabbing the inner part of the query here. And I can guarantee you, just about guarantee you, that I'll get back more than 25 records. And you'll notice, well, that's interesting. I got back two records. All right, so what does this say in English? This says, give me the invoice total from invoices where the vendor ID is equal to 34, okay? And you saw the two invoice totals. They were 116.54 and 1,083.58. Then we used that and we said, show me the vendor name, invoice number, vendor total, for all invoices that are greater than both of these. So when we look at this, if we order it, let's not order it by vendor name. Let's say, let's order it by 
invoice total in descending order and then by vendor name. And what you should notice is every one of these should be greater than 1,083.58. And you'll notice the smaller one, smallest one is down here. So they're all greater than that. So you can use the all keyword to test that a comparison condition is true for everything returned from the subquery. If no rows are returned from the subquery, a comparison that uses all is always true. If all the, the rows returned from the subquery contain a null, they're all false. All right. Then there's also any and some. Let's take a look at one of those examples. Again, I'm just keying in the stuff that's in the book. This is how you learn this stuff. And I think when we get done, we, even though it's not in the book, we'll order it by invoice total. Now, before I run this, again, let's look at the inner part. All right. Again, this may seem long. This may seem laborious. This is how you learn this stuff. All right. So 666 six, six and 2567. And if we look, there they all are. And you might say, well, wait a minute, that's six. Yeah, it's greater than, or I'm sorry, less than any. And I think I'm, wait, did I put greater than in there? No, I did put less than, okay. So this is the invoices that are smaller than the largest invoice for 115. What was the largest invoice for 115? That was this one. Remember, the largest one that was in there was 2567. So this is another way of saying that it's le anything less than 2567. So when we ran this query, and let's order it by invoice total in descending order. You'll notice that everything that's in here is less than 2567. Okay? So you can use any, the any keyword to test that a condition is true for one or more values returned by the subquery. Some works the same as any, so we should be able to just change this from any to some, and it should work the exact same way. You see the output. We've got what? 17 total rows. We run it again. Lo and behold, 17 total rows. Okay? All right. Next, let's, let's um, talk about what's referred to as a correlated, excuse me, a correlated subquery. 
everything we've been doing thus far is an uncorrelated subquery. In other words, an uncorrelated subquery is executed only one time for the entire query. When you use a correlated subquery, it's executed once for each row that's processed by the main query. So it's kind of like doing a loop. All right. So again, just working the examples that are in the book. They've got select vendor ID invoice number invoice total from invoices I where invoice total is greater than, and here's where we put in our subquery, select average invoice total from invoices, and I like to put this myself, I like to put this on separate lines so I can see exactly what's going on here. So select that from invoices where vendor ID equals I dot vendor ID. Now, I, I'm going to be a little picky here. I wish the author had done this. So I'm selecting everything here from invoices. All right. And it looks like I'm joining it on itself because the only thing I have in here is invoices. All right. So let's see. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. So. I think to get this to work, if I try to run it as is, I should get an error message, and I'll explain to you what the error message is in just a second. But if I run it like this, I should get an error message, and I do. It says unknown column, I dot vendor ID. So I think I might have to say this. Bring it back from invoices I. Now I'm joining it on itself. Now it works. Look familiar? 1879, 74. All right. How about using the subquery? Get each invoice amount that's higher than that vendor's, than the vendor's average invoice amount. All right, you might say, well, wait a minute, this isn't 1875, but remember, what I did in the, when I did the inner query by itself, it only returned one thing. That was the average of all vendors. But running it like this, what we're doing is we're figuring out the average for each vendor. All right, and for each vendor, notice, probably would have made more sense here to have ordered it by vendor ID, because I goofed up. Ugh. There we go. All right, so there's each vendor, but each of the queries for these vendors is greater than that particular than that particular vendor's average. So what a correlated subquery does is it's executing there once, for each one of the vendors, and it's finding for each vendor his, her, or their average. Then it's going back and finding the invoice totals that were greater than that average. 
So a correlated subquery refers to a value provided by a column in the main query. For each different value that's returned in, by the main query for the column, the subquery returns a different result. All right. There's an exists operator. Okay? And there's an example of that on page 203. So again, let's take a look. So this says get all of the vendors that don't have invoices. That's the not exist part. Now if I did type it in correctly, all right, huh, the result set isn't the same as the result set that is shown in the book. Select vendor ID, vendor name, vendor state from vendors where not exists. Select star from vendors where vendor ID equal vendors dot vendor ID. Now I got nothing back and our author here got 88 rows returned. So one of us is wrong. Select vendor ID. Vendor name, vendor state from vendors where not exists. Then we've got our inner query. Select star from vendors where vendor dot ID equal vendors dot vendor ID. So we're joining it on itself. And we're saying Show me cases where there is the vendor ID, vendor name, and vendor state where there is nothing in here. So let's do this. Let's do a select star from vendors. This is going to be big, but we'll, it'll be fine. So select star from vendors, doggone it. And let's order this by vendor ID, okay? There's our vendor IDs, and I'm, I'm trying to look at what the author shows here. So the author says there's 122. All right, so I want to go to the next page here, and the first one he shows is vendor ID 33, right there. All right, so I want to select this from here, and I'm going to change the query for a second, and I'm going to say where vendor ID equals 33. Okay, that's the one that's shown in the book. And according to this, there is an ID, there is a name, and there is a state. is true. I wonder, did I make a mistake here? Yes, I did. There should have been invoices. There we go. 
So, that was my mistake. Now let's check it out. Because I was checking the vendor ID to see if it was empty, and I should have been checking the invoice ID to see if anything existed. So let's try that. Now notice what we get. All right. 88 total, which is exactly what is shown in the book. So these are the 88 vendors for which there are no invoices. So you can use the exists operator, in this case the not exists, to test that no rows were returned by the subquery. You can check the exists to see if at least one row was returned from the subquery. All right. Okay. All right. If we want the most recent invoice date for each vendor, we'll select the vendor name and immediately put in a subquery, select max invoice date. from invoices where the vendor IT equal the vendor's ID as latest, we'll just call it latest date. from vendors order by this field right here in descending order. Let's make sure I didn't put any mistakes in there when my typing. Of course I did unknown column vendors ID. It should have been vendors dot vendor ID. All right, so there I think was my error. And I've got each one of my vendors in here and I've got the latest date that they had. So 122 rows. So when you quote a subquery in a select clause, the subquery must return a single value. When you quote a subquery in a select clause, typically you use a correlated subquery. A query that includes a subquery in its select clause can usually be restated using a join. Again, as I mentioned before, six of one, half dozen of the other, as far as which one you prefer. It's an individual type of decision. All right, just a couple more, and then we'll put this chapter to rest. Vendor state, the max. The author separates this over several lines because this is a big query.
Then he takes this whole thing here and gives that a name. Now again, probably a pretty good chance I made some kind of a mistake typing in here, but let's just take a look anyway. And as you can see, I did unknown column, in vendor ID and clause. Unknown columns, sum of invoices. So let's take a look. Oh, that's whatever I call that here, it's got to be what I call it up here. So this has got to be what I call it here. Let's see if that fixes my error. And it did. All right. This gets the largest invoice total for the top vendor in each state. Again, these are the kinds of things that there's at least a good chance that somebody like, for example, a marketing person would be interested in stuff like this. All right. And if you notice, we grouped it by vendor state, which is fine, but I think we should still be able to order it by uh, max sum. I don't know if that'll work or not. This is, to me, is the, the fun part of this, is just trying different things to see whether or not they work. All right. And probably, as we've already talked about several times, I probably want it in descending order. But this is something that I could see a marketing person wanting that kind of information. Well, gee, maybe we should be putting more of our efforts on Michigan because look at that, look at that total we've got back as opposed to Ohio. All right. So a subquery that's coded in the from clause returns a result set that is typically referred to as an inline view. When you code a subquery in the from clause, you must assign an alias to it. That's why we've got that T. When you code a subquery in the from clause, you should use an alias for any columns that perform calculations. All right. Just a couple more, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put this to rest here. Okay. Now, I, there's way too much for the next one for me to type in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit here, so to speak. And I'm going to go out to the <clears throat> I'm going to go out to the book and I'm going to hope against hope that in chapter seven, if I go long enough in these PowerPoints, This is that complex query. All right. And what this query does is it retrieves the vendor from each state that has the largest total. So it uses three queries. And they're commented accordingly. All right. The query here that's named T1 and the one named T2 will actually return the same result the vendor state, the name, and the sum of the invoices. Then the subquery T3 returns a result set that includes the vendor state and the largest sum of invoices for that state. That's pretty, pretty heavy stuff. I wouldn't give an assignment like this, but what we have here is notice here, 662, 71, 70, uh, 125, 34. Well, if we go back and look at this, 71, 25, 34, 662. What we're doing in here is we're figuring out which vendor actually has the biggest sum value, all right, and then for each state. So we're just taking the query we previously did 
and we're expanding it. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. So the last thing the author talks about here is this, and you can see it here. He gives you a procedure for building complex queries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him at his word here, okay? Yeah, state the problem in English, and even write it down in English to make sure, talk to the person or people that you're doing the query for, to make sure that what indeed you think uh, the, the information you're getting is the information that they want. Then use pseudocode, whatever that happens to be, write it out. Then code the subqueries. Test each individual subquery on its own to confirm that they give you the correct data. Then put it all together, code and test the final query. All right, and that pretty much is it for this chapter. So I'll come back in just a couple minutes and talk about the SQL, MySQL data type.